Hey, what's up guys? This is Eben here. First, I just wanted to thank you all for being so patient over the past few weeks. Uh, I have not been releasing so much video content. Uh, I've been working on a lot of stuff here, including my new website, uh, which is now live, so you can check that out in the description below, um, as well as a number of commissions, and I'm actually getting ready to move soon, so lots going on here. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, shoot you guys a quick video today of a lesson I had with a student uh, in which we talked a little bit about using color contrast uh, and adjusting composition in one of his paintings. So uh, thank you to Jürgen for uh, allowing me to use this footage and, and your painting as an example. So today we're going to go over this painting. Uh, we're going to talk about how it can be improved and generally we're going to talk about what you can do in sort of that first 30 minutes to an hour to make your painting uh, really work well in terms of its overall color, its overall composition and balance and so on. So thank you all for watching and please subscribe to the channel if you have not already and otherwise just enjoy the video. Right, so you have, you have a really strong kind of warm tone here overall and I can see over here you're starting to experiment with some, some cooler um, some cooler light as well. Uh, and that could, that could be, um, possible, you know, sometimes at this time of day, the, uh, the moon and the starlight might start filling up the shadows a little bit. Um, and you know, even if it doesn't necessarily, you can just sort of take artistic license with this too. Um, so I would, you know, once again, we have these, these character silhouettes that don't have too much definition here. So we could go in, um, and start to give them a little bit of a, a cool ambient light source. Um, even if it's, you know, even if the, there isn't necessarily even a reason for it, I'll probably cool this off a little bit more. Can still be there. Yeah, actually, I want to go, go much cooler with this because you already have some some nice sort of blue violet cool tones in here so i want to build on that a little bit is it just me or is color super uh confusing <laughs> the, you know when you showed me the grays how a gray could look green right I, I still can't like wrap my head around it well it's all it's all relative and that's that's the thing it's um it's uh color is 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 going to change depending upon the context that we see it in um, so uh yeah i mean in in this case um you know against i can use a a pure gray against this warm here you see how that looks green yeah um it's just because everything around it is red and her eyes are just trained to to see contrast so it's going to push that further into the green and if we take that same color and we put it right here it actually looks a little bit orange because it's right next to blues and um the complementary of blue is orange <laughs> so it's like it's just you know the way our eyes work and color isn't like this static thing it's not like this is blue and so on and, and this is red and you know sort of letting go of that that attachment to sort of you know, l what we perceive as localized color, like this ball is red and so on. Um, letting go of that is, is one of the, the most important things you can do to give your paintings, you know, stronger color. Because mm. then you can start to say like, um, you know, in this situation, if um, in, a, in a cool light source environment, we can say like, oh, I want this cape to be red. Um, but if I make it, if I actually make it red, it's going to look really weird in this context. Uh, clearly there's a cool light source happening here. So I'm actually going to push that red. Um, I'm going to push it. I'm going to cool it off by bringing it towards the gray and I'm going to cool it off by bringing it um, also vertically down the color wheel here towards blue. And so now if we, if we describe these figures using this sort of dullish, uh, purple color maybe a bit darker than that uh it's going to look it's going to look more red in this context 
And so like, you know, you can use um, colors that you, um, that you wouldn't necessarily expect an object to be to describe it in different situations um, to, to give your, uh, your piece more realism uh, because, you know, when people see that they're going to understand uh, they're going to perceive that as a red object, but they're going to understand it's a red object because of the context you've surrounded it by. Whereas if we use the same red to describe um, or the, the same color to describe red in a cool light source and a warm light source, immediately that's going to be suspicious for them. They're not going to know, they're not going to be able to put it in those terms necessarily, um, but it's not going to look quite realistic. Hmm. So likewise, if we have red objects against, you know, say this is just like a, a brown or a, a, a gray landscape here, we can use the, the, this cool blue ambient light to describe the landscape. And then we can use that cool sort of violet to describe the red uh, clothing here. So now we have, an, you know, a nice contrast uh, between these characters and um, and the rest of the the scenario here, and you know, once again, like there doesn't have to be, you know, you you might be asking yourself, like, why is there a cool light source there? There doesn't necessarily have to be a reason other than the fact that we want to create contrast, um, and you know, if we make it convincing enough, nobody's going to question that decision. So next, you know, I would like to, to give these characters a bit more, um, just a bit more contrast here. And now to sort of, you know, we have, um, we have this big shadow area. So none of this sunset light is actually directly hitting this area. Um, now we have this ambient light from the sky. And as you have it, the whole sky is, um, it's basically, it's, it's taking on the, um, the, the tones of the sunset, um, which, you know, is, is logically totally possible. But now that, now that I I'm trying to develop this, this cool contrast a little bit more, um, I'm going to want to go in and, um, and sort of modify that concept a little bit. I think I want to have a little bit more coolness around the, the edges of the sky and also in these shadow areas. I'm going to play up some, some mist here, some really cool uh, mist, especially near the, the base of the mountain. So that's going to, it's going to serve a couple functions. It's going to show depth um, and it's also going to help highlight these characters a bit more. And, you know, as far as, as far as this, um, you know, this, this patch over here, uh, I think we can just keep as a stronger silhouette, unless there's like something that, that is deliberately reflective over here. We won't need to use that, um, that level of value there. We can just kind of simplify. We don't have to get rid of all the texture here, but I'm just going to simplify this whole shape. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, instead what we can do here is now, now we're starting to think, okay, towards the edge of the canvas here, things are starting to cool off a little bit, you know, that top of the sky where it's sort of starting to transition into nighttime a little bit, or, you know, some, some of these parts of the cloud that are not being fully uh, lit by, um, by that sun. Now that it's sinking below the horizon, we're going to start to see some shadows in these clouds here. Maybe not quite so intense, but those shadows are going to start to take on a little bit of, of coolness themselves. And that's a, a little bit too strong there, but um, so we can start to imagine, even if we just hint at it on the edge of the canvas, we can now start to imagine that the, um, the sky is starting to, uh, to take on a bit more coolness in these areas where, where the sun isn't quite reaching it. So we can continue to, de to develop this contrast. I'm going to lower the contrast in this area down here since it's close to the edge of the canvas. And um, so now we we're starting to have a bit more of a, a cohesive um, lighting contrast uh, set up here. And 
um, you know, this, the reflections in this water are great. You know, we can keep these sort of use that to highlight the, um, the sunset a little bit. Um, and then, um, you know, I think, uh, as far as this whole shape here, we've got this little nub here and that's a really interesting, uh, thing, but we don't really want to have our eye. Uh, it seems like this is the main focal point here. So I'm going to actually just, um, simplify this area. And, um, you know, this, this, uh, this tower here, it could be workable in this, in, as part of this concept, we could, e I, I would suggest either sort of making it a bit, um, a bit bigger. So it doesn't draw so much attention or we could get rid of it entirely. Um, as it is right now, I think it sort of draws the eye up, uh, mm -hmm. to the top of the page. But if it's connected to this area down here somehow, like if this is a smaller section of this larger structure, we can make that happen. You know, we could, um, we could take this whole area and sort of develop it as a larger structure of which um, this section down here is just sort of a small part. So, you know, that's kind of something where you can, um, uh, you can sort of make that call yourself depends upon what, what you want your, your concept to be, you know? Um, and then for, you know, for these shapes here, like this is a really strong focal point. So if you're going to spend some time on something, um, it's, you know, I would spend some time on these, uh, these structures here, um, you know, cause they're, they're pretty obviously just some, some sort of rectangular cutouts at this point. Mm. And this is where the eye is going to be drawn. So, you know, we really want to, we want to take some time to make this, this look nice here. Whatever, whatever it is, you know, however you want to develop it. Can have some different sort of levels of this here, and you know, yeah. I mean, we we could we could have it be part of a whole city thing like that. Um, that's kind of a cool. I don't know. I'm I'm sort of torn between keeping it like this and then maybe getting rid of this one up here to put like, it depends upon, you know, what your, your focus is. I'd say if we kept it as part of a larger system, uh, it would be nice to see some, maybe some other smaller repetitions at different scales here. So it's kind of more of a part of a bigger city. Um, than anything, but yeah, you know, of course there's, there's, there's room for some different ideas there, but the main point being, um, you know, since this is our, our main point of focus, we're going to want to make sure we develop that, uh, you know, give that some nice sharpness, some nice detail. Um, so, so, you know, when the eye is, is drawn there, uh, we're going to, we're going to see it's going to be rewarded with a nice, uh, a nice little thing. And the more detail we put in here, the, the more we develop this, the stronger its pull is going to be as a focal point. And the more we can get away with not detailing other stuff around here, um, we could really easily just sort of leave this uh, mountain as a, as a silhouette shape. Or if, you know, if you wanted to, you could use that cool light source to create some, some little suggestions of, um, of detail around here. But pretty low contrast, you know, you don't, wouldn't want to draw too much uh, attention here, but yeah. And then there's some, I don't know, some opportunities to maybe create some other stuff happening here. Yeah. So we've got, um, you know, we've got a nice, uh, you know, um, we have a strong focal area here with some nice sort of sharp edges and, um, 
and we have this this contrast between this warm warmly illuminated area and then we have this sort of cool more calm uh, area and now we have a nice sort of story going between these two i think i have a tendency to sort of like you know, as I, I left this piece and then it's like, okay, next one. And mm -hmm. then sometimes I'll, I'll return to pieces and then I maybe, maybe I should spend more time on them, sort of come back to them a week later and then keep developing it. Right. So you're usually, uh, you, are you usually just putting in like, uh, you know, your 30 minutes or 30 minutes to an hour on each of these or. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I think that's the most important thing really. Um, and like a lot of what I'm describing here, you can, you can accomplish it in that time. It's just a matter of seeing how that needs to be prioritized. You know, like what, uh, what I've done here has been maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, if, if you sort of, if you kind of get these ideas sooner on in the process, um, it's, it's not something you will have to do later on. You know, it's, it's, these are sort of bigger, bigger concepts than, um, going in and doing a lot of detailing. Uh, most of what I've done in terms of detailing has just been this spot here and then over here, you know, just those very key areas, you know, we could even go in and like the more little details you have at specific areas, like I said, um, the more it's going to trick your your viewer into thinking that you've included it everywhere. Yeah. So even if, if I go in and just start creating, you know, tiny little castles here, if I just spend five minutes on that, it's going to really look like this whole piece is much more developed uh, than it actually is. Thank you.